Today on PCR, we get our summer reading on, as it's all about the public libraries and the many services they offer Pitt County citizens. We'll ride along with the Bookmobile and welcome Shepherd Memorial Library Director Greg Needham as our special in-studio guest. We have all of that plus the latest in county news on this episode of the Pitt County Review. Hello and welcome to PCR. I'm your host, Kiara Jones, Director of Public Information and Media Relations for Pitt County. Here is always to keep you informed about the functions and services of your county government. It's summertime here in Pitt County, and for many of us, that means vacations and road trips that may or may not end in relaxing with a good book. Well, before you head out or log on to your favorite website, you may not realize the wealth of literature available in your own neighborhood library. Well, today we have a special show fully dedicated to bringing you some of what your community has to offer, including a special interview with Shepherd Memorial Library Director Greg Needham. But before we get to that, we're sending it over to the PCR Information Room, where Helen Hamilton has the latest in county news. Helen? Thanks, Kiara. We start off with some good news in the announcement of major funding to support an initiative recommended by Pitt County. On Monday, June 16th, the Golden Leaf Foundation announced a $1.25 million grant to support the Advanced Manufacturing and Innovation Academy, a multiple agency partnership with the goal of producing a comprehensive, hands-on initiative aimed at fueling a regional advanced manufacturing and innovation workforce, beginning with middle school students. Pitt County Manager Scott Elliott, who is responsible for approving a project to be submitted to Golden Leaf, had received requests from Pitt County Schools, Pitt Community College, and East Carolina University. The successful cross-institutional collaboration is the first of its kind and may be replicated in other projects. Once implemented, the program will provide an effective education to workforce pipeline to address the growing shortage of Eastern North Carolina advanced manufacturing workers and entrepreneurs technically skilled in science, technology, engineering, art design, and mathematics, as well as innovation and entrepreneurship processes. In addition to Edgecombe and Beaufort counties, all 13 Pitt County middle and K-8 schools will be included in the program. In addition to a healthy mind, it is also good practice to keep a healthy body. And one Pitt TV show aimed at helping you do just that is back with fresh episodes and a new host. In January, the Public Health Department and Pitt TV viewers said goodbye to Health Promotion Program Coordinator Stephanie Hart. Hart also served on Pitt TV as the host of the active living show, Get Active, where she encouraged viewers to lead a healthier lifestyle through proper nutrition choices and small positive activity changes. Well, after a few months hiatus, Get Active is back on the air with the new host, Brittany Kinder. Brittany is the health promotion nurse at the Public Health Department and brings a wealth of knowledge to the show and Pitt County citizens. The latest episode of Get Active, which is Kinder's first, encourages citizens to get out and exercise while utilizing the different resources Pitt County has to offer. Currently, the episode can be seen at various times throughout the day on Pitt TV, Suddenlink Cable Channel 13. It can also be accessed on our YouTube and Peg Central websites. Stay tuned to Pitt TV as new episodes are already in production and will be airing soon. And now it's time for your Board of Commissioners update. At their June 16th regular meeting, the board voted to adopt the budget for fiscal year 2014-2015. The new budget took effect on July 1st and includes a total budget of just over $215 million, with the general fund being nearly $152.9 million. At the same meeting, the board also voted unanimously to approve the Sheriff's Office request for permission to apply for funds under the COPS hiring program. The request is for two sworn deputy positions for which federal grant funds will pay 75% of entry-level salary for a three-year period. 
The project focus will be on reducing violent crime with an emphasis on intelligence gathering on gun-related violence. Remember, if you missed the latest board meeting on Pitt TV or couldn't make it in person, you can always view it online via our YouTube and Peg Central websites. And finally, in this month's Employee Spotlight, we again recognize one Pitt County employee who not only helped save a friend's life, but is now working to better her own. Longtime viewers of PCR may remember our May 2012 episode where we highlighted the selfless acts of Bridget Hill, an imaging services department employee who donated one of her kidneys to help save the life of a friend and 14-year dialysis patient. After years of trying various exercise programs, Bridget has found the key to helping better her own life through positive, healthy changes. She has recently taken up running and started out by simply running from one mailbox to the next in her neighborhood. In February of 2013, Bridget ran in several 5K races and most recently she completed her first half marathon. So in honor of all you've done to help others and the inspiration that you are still being to those around you, we shine this month's employee spotlight on you, Bridget Hill. That does it for this edition of the news. Back to you, Kiara. Thanks, Helen. Stay tuned because when we come back, we'll share our special interview with Library Director Greg Needham. It's pretty obvious that Pitt County is a great place to live, work, and play. In fact, it's not much of a secret to anyone. Now you can find out what everyone is saying about our community by visiting the Pitt County Distinctions page on the Pitt County website. Just go to PittCountyNC.gov and click on Distinctions under the About Us tab. There you'll find out all about the various awards, recognitions, and achievements we've received that help distinguish us as a leader in the state and the best in the East. To learn more about what makes your community great, visit the Pitt County Distinctions page today. Did you miss some important programming from Pitt County government? That's okay, because everything you see on Pitt TV is also available anytime online at the Pitt County Peg Central website. View it all at pitttv.pegcentral.com. Welcome back. Since 1930, Pitt County citizens have freely enjoyed the exciting adventures, wondrous worlds, and educational opportunities afforded them by the Shepherd Memorial Library. Since it first opened its doors nearly 84 years ago, the library has grown to multiple branches spread out all across Pitt County. Earlier, we were very fortunate to have Library Director Greg Needham stop by to talk with us about what you can find in your modern library. Welcome to the show, Greg. Thank you very much, Kiara. I'm delighted to be with you. Okay, so for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with the libraries. Well, I'm Greg Needham. I'm Director of Libraries for Shepherd Memorial Library. Uh, the Library Director is sort of a uh, head manager and librarian rolled into one, so I'm responsible for um, every aspect of the operation, the whole library system uh, for Greenville and Pitt County. Okay, so when people hear Shepherd Memorial Library, they think of the library downtown, right? Right. But there are many other branches in within Pitt County, right? True, it's a whole system. You've got that, that beautiful historic library that opened in August of 1930, but as uh, Greenville and Pitt County grew, the system grew and expanded. So you have the East Branch Library on for, uh, just off 14th Street um, in that shared building with Recreation and Parks, J.C. Park area. You have the George Washington Carver Library on 14th Avenue um, in West Greenville. You have the Winterville Library uh, in Winterville where they built their own beautiful dedicated library building. You have the Blunt Library in Bethel in the old train station, which is wonderful. Oh wow, but that's nice. A lot of people haven't visited that. It's worth a trip uh, to Bethel. So, and the Bookmobile and Outreach, uh, you put all those things together, things together, you have a whole um, library system for uh, reaching all the people. Right. So how long have you been working with the system? Well, I've been here as library director for four years now. Um, I followed on the heels of Willie Nelms, who was director for 29 years. Wow. Uh, yeah, so he left a great legacy in that expanding library system to meet the growing demand as the population boomed. Um, you, you think about uh, East Carolina University and how they're, how they're growing, the medical school and all of that, all the population has surged. You need to have all of the library services available to all of the residents uh, as your population expands. So. All right. So you talk about services. For those who haven't been to a library in a long time, talk about a right. modern 
library. What does one look like? It's so exciting. And I'll have people tell me, you know, oh, you know, what's going on at the library these days? I haven't been in the library since elementary school or right. something. And I'm just blown away because what we have is all of the all of the best traditional library services. So we've got a quarter of a million paper books in the system, you know, that go back and forth between the branches by courier every day. So you can get all of that. Magazines and newspapers, reference service, all the things people always relied on, uh, children's programming. But you also have all of the cutting edge, leading edge, sometimes bleeding edge technologies that we're rolling out at the library all the time. So we're, we're completely mobile uh, compatible. We have Wi-Fi. We have all of the public computing access at all of the locations. Um, and not just you know, um, computers and internet, but for example, we have children's computers at all of our locations that are early literacy stations. They're loaded with um, software applications that support all of the school curriculum, math, science, reading, and everything. So some people have a computer for their children, but they don't have one like this. Okay. So you bring your kid and put them on that computer, they can really learn. Um, we've got eBooks, growing eBook collections. So use your um, mobile device, uh, iPad or whatever it is, just not a regular Kindle. Those are still proprietary, but um, uh, we have Zinio e-magazines. We have um, NC Live resources, so access to hundreds of online newspapers, magazines, journals, ebooks. That way, we have um, local history and genealogy resources, including Ancestry.com, which is free. Some people sign up for a subscription. You can get that at the library. You do have to be in the library to use Ancestry, but then we also have Heritage Quest, which is available any place you have internet. You want to search the census records, work on your family tree. Um, so it really runs the gamut. The Modern Library also has meeting rooms. Uh, so people use our free meeting room space for all sorts of, of meetings that they have. We have wonderful outreach librarians from the Lopez Health Sciences Library that um, they put on a program they call Healthier You. They'll teach people to use the National Library of Medicine to find out about their diabetes or other ailments instead of they're just Googling it. Okay, right. so um, really exciting. Um, I talked about the public computer services that we have. We've got over 100 computers at the library for the public to use across the different locations. Um, and we've been replacing those with federal grants uh, over the last four years while I've been here as director. Um, the people that use the computers at the main library know they're getting really old. Well, we've got a grant. I'm really excited to share this. Um, coming up when we get in the, across the summer, we'll be replacing all of those public computers at the main library that are eight years old mm -hmm. with brand new computers with federal library services and technology uh, act grant funds. And I have to say this, through the Institute of Museum and Library Services, that has to be in all the publicity. <laughs> um, but th that's, that was at no cost to local government, no cost to local taxpayers. Um, the matching fundings provided by the fabulous Friends of, of Shepherd Memorial Library who conduct those book sales uh, in September and February, and the proceeds help us do things like support uh, the summer reading program, uh, give us matching grants for fun, uh, matching funds for grants, excuse me. Um, and. So we'll put those new computers in, and then we have a new partner, and that's the Literacy Volunteers of Pitt County. Now, they, their volunteers are very often in the different library locations tutoring um, their um, literacy students, uh, improving everyone's uh, language capability. They're going to also be providing instructors for the new computer lab that we set up at the main library, so they're going to they're gonna help us by providing instructors for basic computer skills, um, and I think they'll also be doing their career readiness certificates, so jobs related skills, because most of the employers, uh, DSM and on, are all going to require that. So the library is really doing a lot, and we're really well placed in the community to help people um, be more literate, have computer skills, be more employable, uh, continue in lifelong learning all through their lives, uh, no matter what their age, be able to do their um, uh, online coursework, so we have community college and ECU students doing their online coursework at the library all the time. Uh, when someone Googles for 60 hours and doesn't find what they look for, they get to the reference librarian who's really good at this, you know, and helps them to find useful information. So we've got information experts. And I, I kind of left the best for last. Our staff maybe are the most important thing. You know, we have fantastic staff at all those locations that can help people to make best use of all of the resources that we have at the libraries. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I am really amazed. You really have gotten me excited about the Modern Library, honestly. And you talked about a lot of services that you provide, and you talked about things that you have for children, but you guys have a lot for every demographic, correct? It's really true. Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we have so many partners. So in some of the children's programming, um, let's think of one example, uh, A Time for Science mm -hmm. with Nancy Bray. They have been coming and um, putting on a program at the library um, 
on a, on a regular basis now. So they did one, the Great Sunflower Project. And so it's reading centered. They'll read all about plants and sunflowers, but then there's also the science component that's built in. So um, those partnerships are really firing us up and making some of the programming really even more exciting. Working together is really, really exciting and, and being right in the sort of the center of the community and, and trying to make a difference. Right, so it seems like those partnerships are integral, right? So they're very important they're just for your huge. success. Right? Whether it's ECU, the Health Sciences Library, mm -hmm. Time for Science, Martin Pitt Partnership for Children, Literacy Volunteers, um, the Friends of the Library, you know, they've got a small army of people who, who volunteer to sort books all year long. So people, people donate their, their books to the library and we take in boxes of books every day. The Friends, for free, volunteer, sort those books, figure out which ones will sell in the book sale, box them up and save them, and then they put on these fantastic book sales. Those book sales are so, so good They've actually been featured in our state magazine in the wow. last couple of years, and so they're, they're seen across the state of North Carolina as really first-rate um, operations. Um, the Friends are, are, are a wonderful volunteer core uh, okay. that makes such a difference. Can you talk about the importance of the library in an economic recession or downturn? Do you see an increase in people coming in, using computers, oh looking goodness. for jobs? Yeah, so we have about a quarter of a million public computer visits in a year, okay, wow. and that's, that's been true ever since I've been here, and it's been during that uh, post-Great post, post -great Recession period. Um, oh yeah, we're helping people on the computers all the time to search online for jobs, to prepare a resume. We've got a great new um, resume uh, preparation tool that we just added to the website. It's free, okay, so people can use. Um, Cypress uh, Resume Builder, that's it. Um, We've got people doing uh, cover letters, you know, how do, I, how do I file for my unemployment insurance? You know, all of those things people have to have computers to do. And you can't be a bagger at Piggly Wiggly if you can't fill out the online job application. Absolutely. So what would be a real barrier to people? You know, if you don't have, if you don't have computer skills, you know, people need to, you have to be able to set up a free email account. What can you do in the digital age if you don't have email, right. you know? Um, so we're keeping people from being left behind who wouldn't have computer and internet access whether it's Wi-Fi on their mobile device, which more and more people are, are getting, or whether it's they need a, a hardwired computer to sit down and use and somebody to help them learn how to use it. That's why we're so excited about the classes that we're about to start offering. Because the more we train those people, you teach a man to fish, you fed them for a lifetime, you know, that, that adage. So um, the role of the library during that time is just incredibly important. So Greg, if someone wanted to find out more information about the library or to volunteer or get involved, where should they go? Go to shepherdlibrary.org, that's www.sheppardlibrary.org. Learn all about the library. Uh, there's a link to the Friends, or you can ask at any location, how do I join the Friends? How do I become a sorter for the book sale? How do I help at the big events when they happen? How do I give to the Friends Endowment? If anyone wants to um, make a financial contribution to ensure the future of the library, that we're able to make as much of a difference as we can going forward, um, that's, what is really, that's what it really comes down to is people. You know, right. It's people helping people. Right. So, um, yeah, we're really proud of our, of our people. You know, we've got a great crew at the library. Um, we're really excited about what we're doing. I know you can tell that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you got me excited, really. Yep. <laughs> Makes me really want to go to the library Got to come now. down. Come and see Absolutely. Me. Awesome. Well, Greg, I know you're very busy, but I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Thanks again so much for the opportunity. Everyone come to the library. Okay? Absolutely. Okay, we've got something for you. Excellent. Thank you. To learn more about the library or to find a branch near you, you can give them a call at 329-4580 or visit them online at shepherdlibrary.org. Stay tuned, we'll be right back to answer some of your emails in just a moment. Volunteers are a team of professionals that serve with dedication and are counted on to protect lives and property. Being a volunteer means having the opportunity to protect the homes and lives of your neighbors. Pitt County needs you. Consider becoming a volunteer firefighter.
Here at the Office of Public Information, it's our job to inform you of and connect you with the many services offered by your county government. Each month on PCR, we do our part to help make that connection by answering some of our commonly asked questions in our regular segment we call Citizen Emails. Nathan emailed, I have an old mercury thermostat that was replaced with an electronic one. Do any of your sites accept these types of items? Thanks. Looking for a way to dispose of this item responsibly. Well, Nathan, thanks for your email. It's great that you're trying to responsibly dispose of your old thermostat. The Pitt County Transfer Station on Allen Road does accept those items. For a complete list of the items that they do accept, check out their website. Thanks. Our next email is from Jason. My son is turning 10 and I was planning to get him a BB gun for his birthday. I did a little research and I found that some counties in North Carolina prohibit children under the age of 12 from using a BB gun. I certainly don't want to break any laws, but I couldn't find any information on Pitt County's restrictions. Are there any restrictions on the use of a BB gun under parental supervision in Pitt County? Please let me know. Thank you. Well, Jason, I heard back from legal and the sheriff's office, and no, it looks like there aren't any restrictions. Our last email comes from Cynthia. I need to get a copy of the covenants for the Pine Ridge subdivision. Where could I get those? Well, Cynthia, the covenants should have been included with the legal documents at the time of closing. If not, a copy should be on file at the Register of Deeds office. You can contact them at 902-1650 or visit them on the web and use their online record search tool. Have a great day. Now for a tweet from ALBD.org. Congrats to at Pitt County NC for being the first NC county to receive Let's Move Cities, Towns, and Counties recognition. Well, thank you. Do you have a question or comment? Then why not contact us? Send us a question on Twitter via at Pitt County NC or just go to our website at PittCountyNC.gov and click on the Contact Us link at the top of the page. While you're there, you'll also find valuable information about government services offered, meeting schedules, and there's even a link to Pitt TV. Stick around. We'll be right back. Beautiful weather is here, and a new season is in bloom. Need proof? Then why not see for yourself at the Pitt County Arboretum? Come tour the many gardens that demonstrate what can easily be done with your own yard. See the beautiful flowers and seasonal plants. Even pick up a few tips through Master Gardener volunteer training. The Arboretum is located at 403 Government Circle in Greenville and is open from sunup to sundown daily. Office hours and restrooms are available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more about the Arboretum, just visit their website or call 902-1701. Welcome back. Earlier we spoke with Shepherd Memorial Library Director Greg Needham about the many wonderful services provided by the library system. However, that got us thinking about all of those who were unable to visit the library, either in person or online. Well, thankfully, there are a couple of programs intended to fill that gap, and PCR quite literally was along for the ride. At first glance, this looks like any other normal field trip. One in which you might imagine kids in a summer camp loaded onto a bus and trekking off to the neighborhood library. While this has all of the books, reading, and meticulous cataloging of any knowledge repository, there's one distinct difference. These kids didn't get on a bus to go to the library. The library got on a bus and went to them. We feel like we're, we're making books and reading more accessible because uh, uh, sometimes I think library, public libraries are taken for granted. Uh, uh, by people who don't realize the huge uh, resources uh, that the public library is offering. Bookmobile librarian Hilliard Woolard will be the first to tell you about the many benefits found in your local library, mainly because for several years now it's been his job to take the library to folks like the elderly or children who simply have no way of accessing those resources by themselves. I do keep a mileage log for fueling purposes and um, we probably run four to four to five thousand uh, miles a year, but we uh, we run the bookmobile uh, three days a week: Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
and uh, those are pretty much full days. Full days that can fully cover the spectrum of readers, often beginning at daycares and ending up at senior centers. Hilliard visits those and every place in between where his services are needed. Uh, some of our patrons that have been Bookmobile patrons for 30 or 40 years, we actually will back back in their driveway right through their back door so they can step out of their, their kitchen door and step right on the Bookmobile. It's that level of personal access to the library that has many appreciating the service, an appreciation also held by Hilliard, who sees it as an active extension of his life's work. On well, some days I'm a hero when I wheel around the corner and uh, and uh, little old ladies are waiting for me to pull up and, and bring them their, their books. But uh, uh, I, I, I foresee uh, the fact that I do enjoy it and I don't feel chained to a desk like I have in the earlier years of, uh, of, of my career or employment and, and other facets, uh, uh, you know, makes for, makes for uh, an enjoyable experience. Usually traveling through her own means, but occasionally seen riding along with the bookmobile, is another feature of library outreach, that is, the outreach librarian. I have a schedule where I make three stops a year um, with whatever child care centers would like for me to come out to visit them, and I go ahead and schedule those stops, and I drive out. I may do um, story time all the way from two-year-olds up to five-year-olds. I might visit their baby classroom. Um, and I pretty much then other child care centers or other schools will give me a call up and just say, hey, we'd love to have a visit, so I go out that way. Outreach librarian Amber Winstead primarily focuses on preschool children, but will make stops to various schools and centers that set up an appointment. Unlike the bookmobile, her main focus is to bring special selections or requests, along with story time interaction directly targeted towards the group she's visiting. They really get excited about the reading and it's nice to see that and see that carry over throughout when they start kindergarten, start first grade. Um, and to see that connection, um, when they're excited about looking at a book, they can tell you about the story, but then to see them as they grow and when they start being able to read on their own and um, how excited they get about that, it's really nice to see. With a background in education, Winstead knows the statistics of how developing good reading skills at an early age can have lifelong benefits. As an outreach librarian for nearly eight years, she's seen those results firsthand. I've seen what reading does for kids, and it's nice to be able to foster that and to just encourage it at a young age. And also, I just have fun. It's a lot of fun hanging out with kids. It's fun reading to them, and it's fun getting to know them and just build relationships with them. Whether those relationships are forged on the road or in a building, everyone agrees that they are the building blocks of making a stronger, smarter community. The library isn't just a place to go check out a book um, and take it home and come back. You um, build relationships. We build a lot of relationships with the people that we go out and see, and so it really um, fosters a sense of community. To find the Bookmobile or Outreach Librarian schedule, you can call the main branch at 329-4580. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wake up and brighten your day with the most up-to-date information from Pitt County government, delivered right to your phone or personal media device. It's the Pitt County Twitter page, your personal source for news, videos, and pictures from all things related to Pitt County government. Follow us to stay informed about the latest Board of Commissioners meetings. Learn about upcoming events. You can even get a sneak preview of award-winning Pitt TV video. It's all here and waiting for you on the Pitt County Twitter page. This is Pitt TV. Empower you. We hope you've enjoyed this episode and hope that we've inspired you to get out to your local library and see where new worlds await your discovery. We want to thank Greg Needham for stopping by and for all the hard work he and his staff do for our community. Stay tuned next month when we have a special interview with Pitt Community College President Dr. Dennis Massey. Until then, don't forget to check us out on your favorite social media sites such as YouTube, Twitter, and Flickr. Just do a search for Pitt County Government. From all of us here at the Office of Public Information and PCR, thanks so much for watching. Music